So today, you know, before I go train back, I'm gonna have one meal. You know, right here I got um, some rotisserie chicken just cooking up here. You know, like I said on my last video, I like the Costco rotisserie chicken, and I just seasoned it with this. It's the gourmet collection, okay? And what I like to do is just season it with this and throw it in the air fryer for about like five minutes. Okay, it's already cooked so it doesn't need to be in there for that long, but as far as the rice, okay, um, first get your pot and set it on high, you know, just to heat up the pot. And here I have a measuring cup, okay, and what I like to do is I like to cook um, two cups of rice at a time, alright. So very, very simple, okay, just grab your cup, okay. I'm gonna do two cups, okay? So as that's heating up, just put two cups. Mm. Now, for every two cups of rice, you want one teaspoon of oil, okay? For every two, for every cup, one teaspoon, okay? So we're gonna have add two teaspoons of. Uh, Grape seed oil, okay? Very simple, very important you measure this out, okay? Because for every gram of oil, it's nine calories. So you wanna really be careful with the amount of oil you add into your food because the calories will add up, right? So, teaspoon, it's one, two, okay? So that's just to help you know, cook the rice. All right. So, what I like to do is just toss it around. Make sure it's mixed in there. Okay. And these are the seasonings I like to add. Okay. I just add garlic powder. And as you can see, I'm a big fan of this brand, the Gourmet Collection. Their chili and lime. Okay. And some Himalayan pig salt. All right, so as this is heating up, just sprinkle that in. I would also add garlic paste, but I ran out of garlic paste. So sprinkle that in. This gives it a lot of flavor, okay? It's really, really good. And some salt. Okay. Now I just stir that. And then once the um, once the rice starts turning translucent or a little brown, that's when I add the water, all right? So as you can see, the rice is starting to cook a little bit. Um, you see it's turning white, a little bit translucent. Um, so that's when you add the water, okay? So considering we have two cups of rice, I normally add two and a half cups of water, okay? So I just use the same measuring cup, come here to the sink. It's one cup. Two. Very simple, okay? Now, next step is you just wait till it starts boiling, okay? So I like to stir this once I add the water. Wait for it to start boiling, and once it's boiling, I put it on, on simmer, okay? So as you can see, it's starting to boil a little bit, but I like for it to boil um, more than that, you know, a hard boil. All right, so once it's boiling, 
that's when you just cover it, okay? And from here, you just set it to a sim, a simmer. <laughs> set it to a simmer, and then you set the timer for 10 minutes, okay? So I'm gonna check it 10 minutes. You know, if it needs a little bit more time, like if I, if I see it's still a little bit watery or it's not fully cooked, then I'll leave it on for like another ten min uh, five minutes and, and check on it then. But that's pretty much it. So we'll check back on this in 10 minutes. So the 10 minutes is up, so let's check on the rice, okay? It looks pretty good. You know, once you see that it's pretty dry on the outside, that's when you know it's done. But sometimes the inside is still a little bit um, too moist, but it came out perfect, actually. So, good. Like, if the inside's a little bit still, like, moist and, like, wet, I hate that word, moist. <laughs> but if it's still, like, wet on the inside, you know, then you know you gotta leave it on a little bit longer. Just stir it a little bit, then cover it and then wait a few minutes, okay? Eating a lot of rice today. Every gram counts, every gram. So this is my second meal for today. Just here I have four and a half ounces of chicken breast and 215 grams of rice. I can add veggies to this, but considering I'm this is I'm going to the gym right after this, I don't want to be too bloated, so I'm just gonna stick with this. You know, like there's some times going to the gym on my way to the gym that I just know I'm gonna have a good workout. You know, and there are other times going in I just know I'm gonna have a bad workout. You know, but one thing that I always tell myself is that you gotta take advantage of the good days days that you feel really really good and really ride that wave and take advantage to push yourself to another uh, to new limits you know because and at the same time if you are having like a bad day just remember you can't have good days without having the bad days if the bad days didn't exist you wouldn't know how a good day in the gym will feel okay so just show up anyways, because the more times you show up, even on the days that you feel like shit, you know, the more of an opportunity you give yourself to have a good day where you crush it, you know? Because there are even times where I feel like, like crap going into the gym, and I actually have a great workout, okay? So just show up for yourself regardless if you're feeling good, feeling bad, you know? But when you do feel good, Ride that wave, man. Just ride that wave, push it. You know, so after training with Steven, I'm definitely um, shortening my rest time. So I'm resting a minute, a minute and a half the most between each set, you know, so the workouts, I'm trying to shorten them, you know. I'm not trying to have like a two or three hour long workout, just like an hour and a half, two hours the most, okay? But at the end of the day, you know, you want the workouts to take as long as it needs to take for you to get the most out of it and based on your schedule too, you know. A lot of people think that workouts should only take like an hour, you know, if not, you'll start, you know, losing testosterone, that's all a myth, you know. Go in and take as long as you need to take and as long as you're able to take to finish your workout and make and do quality reps and sets but you know if you're on a time crunch definitely show in your rest times so today i'm gonna be walking you guys through a back workout okay today my first back day okay I'm gonna start off warming up on the bike just like always okay um, super important you warm up get that core temperature nice and high and then I'm gonna crush back today let's do this I'm doing is weighted 
pull-ups, I'm gonna be supersetting it with uh, cable uh, pullovers. Okay, so let's go to that. So for this exercise, you wanna push your hips back, okay? Really stretch out your lats, okay? What we're focusing on is the lats and the lower part of your lats, okay? What's good about this exercise is that all you're using is your back, a little bit of triceps, but it gives your, your biceps rest. Fry your biceps, okay? So here, pull in towards your hip and squeeze your back. When you're pulling in towards your hip, you're squeezing your shoulder blades back, boom, okay? Sticking your chest out. It's almost like a row, but just with your back, on your arms and feel a six pump on your lats, okay? So you do 15 here. Now to pull up. Okay. Doing neutral grip pull ups, very important when you do pull ups, okay? You pull your chest to the bar, okay? You don't want to come up with your neck, it's chest to the bar. So really try to stick your chest out and squeeze your back when you're pulling, okay? And full stretch in the bottom. You don't want to be doing these half reps, okay? Full stretch, squeeze at the top, okay? And if it's too hard to do body weight or weighted, then add, add this, okay? Find an assistant pull-up machine, use this, but leave your ego at the door and do it right, okay? So this belt right here is to add weight. A lot of people like using plates, but I personally like using dumbbells. It's more compact, doesn't get in the way. So don't use plates. I don't recommend it. I recommend you use dumbbells when you're adding weight with a, a dip belt. Let's go. meant to target your lats and your lower lats. Now here, what we're doing is the ISO low row, okay? We're doing one arm at a time, okay? So, I learned this exercise from Matt Ogus, he's a bodybuilder that I follow. But what's cool about this exercise is that it really targets the lower parts of your, your lats really well. Okay. So it's one arm at a time. You walk it out here and you put your opposite palm here on the pad to stabilize yourself. Okay. And from here, you can keep your elbow tucked, okay? And pull it down towards your lats. Boom. Right here, you want to squeeze. You should be feeling all this back here. All this, this is what we're trying to hit. You kind of lean to the side a little bit and fully stretch. Squeeze. Stretch. Squeeze. You're not feeling the squeeze, you're not feeling it. Like I always tell people, it's super important that you strengthen the movement. Don't think about strengthening the muscles. Think about strengthening the movement. Perfect the movement and make, make sure 
you keep that standard for every single rep, every single set, regardless of how heavy you go. Because as you, you're performing the movement properly and getting stronger with that fixed range of motion, with that fixed contraction, you get, you're gonna start growing. As opposed to you trying to grow the muscles and you're yanking on, on the weight, you're gonna get hurt, okay? Strengthen the movement, don't think about strengthening the muscle, okay? Perfect the movement and then progress from there. Target your lower lats. Okay. One, grab the bar just outside of shoulder width. So if you curl your arms up like this, it's just outside, right here. Okay. Here's where you want to grip the bar, just outside of shoulder width. When you pull the bar, you want to pull it under your chest, right here. Boom. Okay. Not up here. Not up here. You're not doing a chin up. You're doing this to target your lower lats. So you got to pull it right here under your chest. Okay, this really, really feel really good contraction on the lower parts of your lats. Okay, so we'll do this super set with easy bar curls. Okay, so I'm just warming up here, getting my body primed for the movement. Okay, I'm trying to really pump that muscle. Okay, this is a warm up set. So easy bar curls again. For this exercise, you got to go too heavy. Keep your shoulder blades back, elbows to your side or slightly in front of you. Okay, I like keeping my elbows slightly in front and curl up and squeeze. You don't got to go heavy. Just got to get the blood in the muscle for these isolation movements. Really squeeze. So the heaviest I'll probably go is like 30s for dumbbell curls. You know, if I feel like it's too light, then yeah, I'll go up. But with lightweight, you can really get a really good stimulation and mind muscle connection as long as you're squeezing and stretching the muscle. Okay. Simple, okay. A lot of people overcomplicate it. You just want to push it, pull it towards the top of your head, anywhere between your forehead 
and your nose, okay? And you really want to squeeze your back. You want to make sure you, you rotate out like this, like front double bicep, and squeeze your back. And squeeze. Tick tock and the time is running out. No first class ticket. We're down. No money that can buy your way out. Go ahead and try it. Cause you had. Cause you had. Cause you had. Your Eleven weeks out, okay. Eleven weeks out. Did you see? Did you hear? Did you feel anything in the world you're in? In the world you're in. Brutality. Make it one. Make it two. Make it three times around. And the suffering. There's suffering. Cardio time. Today, 30 minutes. My cardio was increased. You know, what I do, once I get at the speed and the incline that I'm looking for, I then set the timer on my phone. Okay? So, and I don't stop until this timer ends. 30 minutes. One thing very important when you're doing cardio, don't hold on to the handles, okay? Like my good friend David, he's a trainer here, he says, don't hold on to the fat, okay? You can imagine when you're holding on to the handles, it's pretty much like sled dogs are pulling you, you're assisting yourself. You gotta bear your weight when you're doing your cardio, super important in order to burn the right amount of calories, all right? Right now I'm at a 11% incline at 3.3 miles per hour. The least I'll go is 8% at 3.3. No less than that is what my coach allows me to do. So every week I try to either go up with the incline or go up the speed depending how I feel. Okay, but no less than 8%, no less than 3.3 miles per hour. Feeling amazing. How about put on some size? Even though I'm getting leaner, put on some size so I'm feeling the extra weight and. Times like this, you just gotta focus by visualizing and being in the present moment. Just make every step your best step, and uh, every step you take is another competitor that you're passing. Okay, that's how I think. I got that from Sadiq, a pro bodybuilder. Every single step you take, you're passing a competitor. You know and be present for each and every single step. Okay. Really try to observe every single step you take and enjoy the process, okay? Because this is something that you're deciding to put yourself through. And at the end of the day, you know, this is a luxury, being able to exercise, okay? Exercise is a privilege, it's a reward. 
okay? We have the opportunity to be able to train and better ourselves, okay? So, that's how you gotta think. Just keep moving forward. Counting down, tick tock, and the time is running now. No first class ticket. What a good workout. So that's it for today. That's the end of the workout. I'm go home, have my rice cakes, protein, and I gotta come back and train a client. So I'll see you guys on the next clip. Hope you guys enjoyed that awesome edit by my boy Kendrick. Okay, I'm gonna put a link to his Instagram in the description down below. Okay, he's been filming and editing these awesome uh, videos for you guys and that I hope you guys are enjoying. Okay, so as you saw, I had an exceptional back workout and there's just a few highlights that I wanna mention that occurred this week. Okay, I am 11 weeks out and you know, uh, a few highlights that I want to point out that happened this week is for the bench press. Okay, I was able to hit, hit 245 pounds for 11 reps. I tried getting a 12th rep, but as you can see right here, okay, I absolutely failed. Okay, like I got pinned by the bar and I had to dump the weight on the side, so it was pretty embarrassing. But that's what happens when you're pushing yourself to the limit, you know, so uh, second thing that I'm most proud of is trap bar deadlifts. Okay, I was able to get 405 pounds. I got four sets. First set, I got 10. Then the following sets, I got eight, eight, and six. You know, so the trap bar deadlift is an excellent exercise to develop your back and your glutes. And lastly, on the hack squat, I was able to get 405 pounds for four sets. The first three sets, I got eight. The last set, I was able to get 10 reps okay so super proud of those lifts uh that happened this week so i'm getting stronger in the gym and i hope you guys are enjoying these videos if you are please give it a like subscribe to my youtube channel to follow my journey to my first men's physique show you know super excited to bring you guys along and show you what it takes to get in the best shape possible for men's physique competition. I'm putting my heart and soul in this competition to perform at my absolute best and to come out looking my absolute best. Um, so, you know, it's all about self-improvement. As long as you're improving yourself from week to week, you know, my goal with this is to inspire you guys to reach your full potential and go for the things that you're, you, you strive for and that you've had a passion for. You know, don't hold yourself back because you know you only live life once all right so thanks for watching guys again subscribe click the bell button click the like button if you like the video and i'll catch you guys on the next vlog just 10 weeks out baby let's go